Hey, hey, welcome back to my channel. Right now I'm at IFEMA, the convention center in Madrid, because I'm visiting ARCO again this year. For those of you who doesn't know, ARCO is the largest art fair in Southern Europe. It's not only the largest, but also it's the most visited. So it's very popular every year. There are people coming from all over the world to visit this art fair. And also it is the most established. It has been here for around 40 years. So 40 years of ARCO that's older than me and probably older than you as well so it's a very very renowned um, historic art fair historic not in a bad way because it is still very relevant today and it's also very institutional academical and it's how can I say you know the typical the art world art fair the art world in one word so for people who are in the art world this is definitely the most important event of the whole year and it's also very commercial it's not only institutional and academic so I would position Arco between Venice Band now and FIAC. I would say it's somewhere in the middle because it's not just commercial, but also, you know, academic, institutional. I think I'm repeating myself already because some people was passing, so I was kind of distracted. I went in there already uh, an hour ago and I had to pop out because I couldn't record uh, inside with masks on. Um, they obligate us visitors to wear masks for the safety. So I had to say that this year is very different than the other years. Last year I was here, uh, the beginning of the pandemic in the end of February, the beginning of March 2020, and people were already um, making some certain kind of measures like the uh, gel, like the alcohol wipes and things, but it's not really as strict as now. You have temperature, you have, you know, like added security uh, for the you know, distancing, for the masks and everything. Uh, but it still it's very nice to be able to come here and meet people and you know touch the woods for real and it's like you're in this physical location it's definitely more uh, immersive it's a more realistic experience than visiting online fairs i think people are fed up with visiting online fairs for the past 18 months and it's time to you know let's face people face to face and just try to you know get back to some sort of normality and last year and the year before and the year before I was here at Arco, I've made different videos and I will include them in the link below so you can check them out if you're interested. But this year's biggest difference is the fact it's taking place in July. And July is a very different uh, atmosphere than in the, let's say, beginning of uh, March or end of February. Obviously, one is summer, one is winter. Of course, you're going to have very different atmospheres. I'm going to show you the video from inside so you can judge on yourself to see how is it like this year, if you like it, if you don't like it. But I would say uh, this year, most people feel a strange sensation facing the fair because they feel that, you know, it is not like the rest of the 30-ish years. It's not like any other Arco they have experienced. Uh, which I can totally relate to because since 2013 I've been coming here so totally this year is kind of a bizarre sensation I would say there's some good things and some bad things about taking place in July I would say two good things and two bad things just to keep a good balance um, let's start with good things one thing good uh, as a PhD student currently enrolled in a school right now I can tell you that in July is a holiday so you can go to uh, fairs, you can travel, you can bring your uh, family or if you have uh, a job like in a school, you can you know, attend, you don't have to worry about work. So during the school holiday season, um, you have much more freedom and liberty to come here and spend time. So that's definitely something positive. There is another thing positive about taking place in July is that people are receiving more and more vaccines. So more people are covered and you are less concerned about other people's safety or your own safety when you are traveling, when you are going to a kind of a, you know, dense area with uh, people. And now I'll tell you two negative points about happening in July. One of the things that is uh, actually an artist who told me who lives uh, in Ibiza and another one lives in Mallorca. And they told me that important collectors and artists right now, they are staying in the islands like, uh, you know, the seaside, like the Ibiza or even other uh, Valencia, like, you know, other kind of cities. They don't want to come to Madrid. It's not really, uh, you know, time and location to be in July. And if everybody is in those islands like Ibiza, Mallorca, why would they pay, you know, 20, 30, 40,000 euro or dollars to be here? It's very expensive fare to attend as a gallerist. And even as a visitor, you know, it's expensive. You need to you know, get a hotel. Maybe you have to receive some sort of uh, uh, paperwork, do some tests. 
the travel costs and the, the expedition cost adds up when during the pandemic you have more and more obligations and requirements. So I would say, yeah, definitely if those galleries are already having a great time in the seaside, they're not coming here. So that's, let's say, a, a bad thing. They must have known it, right? Like if they're from Madrid, they know that people are going out immediately after the school finishes. So this is something um, I don't think they need me to point out. <laughs> they already knew it and they still choose because weighing the good and bad. And then there is another negative point is that it's going to be really hot this weekend. This Sunday is going to reach 41 Celsius degrees. It is really, really, really hot. I would say it's the hottest day in the whole entire maybe the last 12 months including 2020 is really really hot <laughs> i think i cannot repeat so many times because you know i'm repeating myself in a FEMA, you need to go from the entrance to the pavilion seven and nine so you need to walk through this whole hallway there are some parts there are covers but there are some parts there isn't any cover so you have to kind of you know get the metro or get the taxi in the middle of the day in the sun so that's kind of discouraging for some people who are sensitive to sunlight or who don't uh, stand the heat so well i went inside already so i can tell you that inside is actually quite nice if you have a broken ac unit it's actually a better idea to spend the weekend indoors in a very nice clean organized and air conditioned space you know having considered the heat outside i thought they will not have enough ac to just cool down the whole pavilions or the two pavilions but they did so that's great news if you are hesitating and concerned about the heat i can tell you that it's quite nice inside and i actually can't wait to go inside right now okay so um i want to say one thing i'm not here to criticize artworks or you know i'm not an art critic so i will not go there although some people who commented on my previous videos and suggested me to focus more on the art and the artist you know i'm not exactly going there for this video because i'm right now visiting the art fair and i want to focus on the organization the experience and the tendency of the fair itself um, but I do want to say one thing regarding um, artists um, because ARCO is not only institutional, academic, but also it has a, a big commercial component. So that's why I would like to kind of mention this thing. Um, so yesterday I received an email from an artist who I don't personally know. So she wrote to me, I wrote back and we wrote to each other back and forth. And she said one thing about her experience, her journey in the art world. Um, I found it really, really intriguing. She said, I'm going to actually code it. So I'm going to grab my phone and read it. She said, I have already sold many dozens more works than Van Gogh, who only sold one well alive. Well, which is true. Okay, so when I first heard this line, I was laughing on the floor because, you know, the, the initial image like in my head it was very vivid and i found it really really funny not in a bad way but funny strong a very strong image but then my second thought is wait a second why would you compare yourself with someone who is emotionally handicapped like who is discapacitated um is there a word for that someone who is emotionally incapable and institutionalized you cannot really compare yourself with someone like that yet he produced works one work every other day so that's very productive for someone who is sick that's already a great achievement along letting along you know like struggling for life and everything not just about selling of course selling part with uh, family is a totally different business i'm just saying that you cannot really compare but then i was like wait a second you know it's let me give you a metaphor it's like you no know, matter if you are uh, academic or if you are commercial if you are hobbyist you are a professional i picture you are different kind of athletes like basketball, ping pong, football, tennis. But because the art world is such a messy place, a condensed messy place, like in the pavilion, right? Like you have like different uh, alleys, different uh, blocks, but you're all in the same place. So it's almost like you're playing different game in the same playing ground, but you cannot really compare yourself, your own strengths against someone else's weakness. And it's not fair. It's like, I want to play ping pong with Kobe Bryant and I say I play better ping pong than Kobe. I play better than Kobe. Of course, I cannot just simply give that statement, but in some aspects, it is true. Right? I'm sure that I have some certain qualities better than any person who is doing 
you know, whatever that I want to compare to, let's say art business or doing art or, you know, in this pavilion, I've seen so many times, I have heard comments from artists, professional artists saying, you know, oh, I can, you know, I can do better this than this artist. I do better that than this artist. But I was like, you know what? You shouldn't really, okay, you can, you can. I'm not saying you cannot because it's a free country, right? Like you, you can do, you know, it's not illegal to do. And also it helps you to feel better about yourself. And it's a fact that maybe you are a better ping pong player than Kobe Bryant uh, because he's not a ping pong player, right? So of course you can compare the way you want to compare, but that's not the point. I think the whole point is that no matter if you enter the pavilion and you think some artists are not so good at certain things, but look at the, what they're good at. Look at what they have achieved and try to discover what you can learn from them by learning about them. And I've seen too many times when they're like beta artists going in somewhere and say, you know, I, I, I'm better at this than this person. Why am I not there? Um, yeah, that's my question too. Why are you not there? I'm sure that maybe this person is more rounded or more better all-rounder with promotion. Maybe he had a better team management skill, so he had a better, bigger team. Maybe he's better in different aspects, even some aspects that is outside of the parameter of the art world. You know, they're there for good reason. And let's just be um, tolerant for a moment. Let's just appreciate what they have done, what they have brought to us and try to learn something. And we are all playing at this big venue, different games, and we try to find our own niche, our own game. And sometimes we are forced to play other people's games. Of course, you might want to feel good about yourself. You need some self-esteem, some confidence, and you want to find the, what you're best at, which is no problem. But that doesn't stop you from just appreciating the rest of the people and learn from them. And I think that's basically what I had in mind going into Arco because of what the messages I received the night before, which is kind of unrelated, but then it is related because this is how I feel when I enter the pavilion. I see thousands of artists, artworks. They are all good at different things. They have their own career path. And in this very messy art world, you try to draw a line. You try to stay in your lane and you try to compete against people who are going everywhere, crossing your path. And it's not easy. I'm not saying it's easy, but this is our reality. And let's just get to work. So I'm going back to the AC room and show you what I see at Arco. If ever, a safe place. Pay attention to the signs at the exhibition center's entrances, exits, and queuing areas, and keep a safe distance. The use of masks is mandatory in throughout IFEMA, and hygiene points with hand sanitizer are available for your use. Please collaborate with the safety and temperature checks and follow our staff's instructions regarding the safety measures. Thank you for your cooperation.